Welcome back to the Packet Lab. Today we're looking at copying files, and when we say files, I mean iOS images, with Xmodem. I'll explain what Xmodem is and why you would ever want to use this method to copy iOS images. You're going to want to know how to do this so that you can stick this in your quote unquote network survival bag. Uh, because when the day comes, and unfortunately it probably will come, you will want to know how to do this to save your bacon. So the inevitable first question is, what the heck is Xmodem? Uh, Xmodem is a simple, extremely simple, file transfer protocol that was popular back in the early BBS days. So now the second question that you probably have is, what the hell is a BBS? A BBS is a bulletin board system. It was a precursor to the modern internet. So back in the bad old days of the... Uh, late 80s, probably early 90s, there were systems that were set up that were BBSs that were um, controlled by a sysadmin and you basically had a modem bank that people would dial into with their screechingly fast 9600 baud modems and connect to a completely uh, text-based system. As a matter of fact, my first experience with connecting to another system was via a BBS in San Luis Obispo, California back in, fuck, I couldn't even tell you, the early 90s on probably a 9600 baud modem. But I digress. Yeah, I'm old. Whatever. Uh, X modem was eventually replaced by, well, Y modem, which does give you a little bit of speed boost. And it is available on Cisco devices. Don't know that it gives any advantage over X modem, so we're not going to look at it. I will mention again in a later slide. And then eventually, of course, the inevitable Z modem. So you had X, Y, and Z modem. X modem is an old, slow transfer protocol. So why the hell would we ever need to use this? Generally on a Cisco device, when you're transferring files, you're going to be doing it over the network. So you're going to be doing it from a FTP or TFTP server going to your device over its network connections, which could be you know, a serial interface, uh, some type of ethernet interface. Anyways, it's, it's going to be relatively fast. I say use the term relatively because it's going over the uh, network. But you also have the option to use the auxiliary and console ports. And those are the two management ports that you connect to via a rollover cable, what I call a you know, blue Cisco console cable. And you have to be directly connected to those ports. Now directly is also a relative term because you could have a modem on site that's connected to the console port or a, a, a access server that's connected to the console port. But anyways, generally you're going to be directly connected to the console port when you're transferring these files. So again, between the auxiliary and console ports versus your normal Ethernet serial ports, you wouldn't ever choose the console or auxiliary ports unless you're in a situation where that's your only option to get an image onto your Cisco device. In that case, these suckers come in real handy and you will be showering oodles of praise on X modem. And believe me, you'll have plenty of time to praise it because it's slow as fuck. In order to use X modem to transfer a file, you're going to need well, three things. Access to the console port of your Cisco device. Now, you can use the auxiliary port. We're going to see later that that might not be an option depending on your iOS platform version. I ran into it where it would not let me use the auxiliary port. You also need a PC. Well, yeah, it's generally going to be a laptop and the files that you need to transfer. So a copy of the iOS image that you're going to use. And most importantly, you're going to need to have a terminal emulator which supports X or Y modem. Uh, protocols. Uh, Secure CRT does this, HyperTerminal and TerraTerm Pro all support X modem. I don't think that PuTTY does. I could be wrong. I don't use PuTTY a lot, so if you want to email me and show me that it does support X modem, that would be great. I didn't see it in the obvious places. And again, I'm not a big PuTTY user. Uh, another note about uh, HyperTerm, you may not even have HyperTerm on your installation of Windows any longer because um, Microsoft does not package it with uh, Vista and Windows 7. So you probably want to have, you know, like I said, TerraTerm Pro or uh, Secure CRT in order to accomplish an X modem transfer. These next couple of slides are just showing you where to find uh, X modem on your specific terminal emulator. Let me blow this up a little bit. So on Secure CRT, you can see that you go to the transfer menu and then it'll open up a drop down and you can send or receive X modem. Pretty easy. Here we're looking at TerraTerm Pro. Let me blow this up a little bit here. And here you're going to go to File, Transfer, and then X modem, and you can see you have Z modem here. I don't see Y modem, but uh, and you can send or receive. Again, not that hard. You look at your documentation to uh, figure out how to get to this. 
And then finally, for completeness sake, here is hyperterminal. You will go to send file, and then from the drop down, you can pick the protocol. And there's X, Y, and Z modem. Boy, they've got a lot of options here. So, you know, if you are running a version of Windows that has hyperterminal, this might actually be a good, good um, terminal emulator. <laughs> might be a good option for your terminal emulator. One important characteristic of the console and auxiliary ports is that the speed. And the speed is hard set and you must match it on the other side. So if you're connecting to a device uh, that has a, uh, for instance, a 9600 uh, baud speed on its console port, you're going to have to match that on the other side with your terminal emulator and set that to 9600 baud. And there's a couple other things that you have to match as well, but I don't want to get ahead of myself here. Most of the time, 9600 baud, and I'm going to table the discussion of baud versus bits per second. Just know that they aren't the same, uh, but it really doesn't matter for our case. This could be 9600 fucking Monty Pythons. It's just a unit. We don't care. We just need to make sure that they match. So on your device, if you do a show line and then specify the line, in this case, the console line zero, uh, it'll give you a bunch of output. I have it piped just to include the line that has baud. So we can see the baud rate is um, 9600, so transmit and receive. And if those are different, yeah, you've gone into an area that I can't probably help you with. It's uh, They're usually the same. And then these other three uh, fields right here, no parity, two stop bits, eight data bits. Wow, two stop bits is interesting because I don't know that I ever used two stop. Uh, but I digress. Let me show you here. Let me bring up secure CRT. And here you go. This is a connections for a serial connection. And we can see here we have baud rate, we have data bits, we have parity, and we have the stop bits, which come back to here. So no parity, eight data bits, 9600. That two stop bits is still bugging me, but whatever. Let me bring this sucker back up again. So in order to connect to this device, I would have to match this with 9600 baud, and that's what it is, 8 data bits. Generally what you're going to do is, you know, 9600, 8, none, and one stop bit. That's weird uh, that it's two on the, on the device. I got to admit ignorance to why the difference in stop bits doesn't matter, but this will work. The thing that I want to show you, though, is that you could change the speed on your line. Do this only if you know what the hell you're doing here. It will make a difference because, especially in our case where we're, you know, transferring uh, an iOS file, which is a, you know, fairly big file to send over uh, a 9600 baud connection, it's going to decrease the amount of time that it takes for us to send this file significantly. But, well, let me get to the command first. So you go under the console line. You know, or the auxiliary line, whichever one you're setting. In this case, we're doing the console line uh, with your line con zero, and then you just issue the speed command. And we invoked iOS help with the question mark here, and we can see that we have quite the range here. I'm not even sure what the hell that number is. Uh, so you know, your first instinct is, well, let's just set this fucker to the highest speed that we can, so that we can get this done, and you know, get my device back up and into production and save my job. Uh, unfortunately, these take specific. First of all, they take specific steps. So you know, you can't really set a 9,225 9, baud connection. It has to be one of the standard connections. And you're going to want to look at your terminal emulator to find out what connection speeds are supported. So I'm going to bring back up Secure CRT. And you can see here under the baud rate, it goes way down to 110. Like I said, 9600 is generally the default, most likely the default across most platforms. Again, check your documentation. But you can see this one tops out at uh, 921,600 baud. So, you know, again, our first instinct is, all right, let's put this at its max, get on my device, and set the same speed here. Problem is, is that the max speed on uh, devices that I've looked at on the Cisco side is 115.2. So 115,200 baud is about as fast as you're going to be able to go. So what I would do is, you know, maybe start with a connection of, why am I not seeing, 230 on both sides. This is if you have the opportunity to play. If you're in a situation where, you know, setting the baud speed and then seeing if it's going to connect is just going to be wasting valuable seconds, go with, you know, 115 and see if that works first. But you could check to see if you can get speeds higher. I was maxing out at this speed. And here is the très important. You must 
match the console line speed with the speed that your terminal emulator is capable of providing. That's what we just went through. When you change your line speed, you will lose connectivity until you match that speed with your emulator. So you're going to lose connectivity. If I get on here and I change my line speed, I'm going to lose connectivity with my terminal emulator until, the, uh, until that side matches.